Now, getting a new job has suddenly given me the need, need is of course in air quotes, for a small old guy knife. Your question to me would be, advanced knife bro, that's my full Christian name, don't you have small old guy knives already? Yes, but I do have a problem with buying things I already have many of. You may have heard of it as collecting. That, and I've always liked the look of the lion steel in collectorknives.net.org.porn or dot whatever, collaboration called the CK01 Shuffler. Lion Steel makes this knife for collector's knives and several variations with different handle materials and another blade shape called the round head. Oh, and there's the Warren Cliff style too. And I chose this one because it looks like something your grandpa would carry. In fact, your grandpa's so old he tells mama jokes and carries this knife. Boom, chump. You know what? Maybe this guy was right. So let's look at the dimensions, like the overall length and weight, with and without the separately purchased clip slip. Remember that show devoted to mama jokes? Blade size and cutting edge. Sometimes I think we're on the edge of a societal collapse, then I'm reminded of shows like that. I mean, we're still here and that was 10 years ago, right? Handle size and grip area. Of course, now we have $140 Tamascus clips for our $400 knives, so... I don't know. Spine thickness, handle thickness, and behind the edge. But back then we had lawn darts, metal dashboards, doctors recommending cigarettes, and lead in everything. Lead, it's what kids crave. Tallnesses. Now we have some dope social media streams from our brand overlords run by their token corporate millennials. So maybe it's a washer. It's just a very gentle downward curve. Did you guys see the new Lit AF Wendy's tweet? Wendy's Twitter is the new Joe Camel, and fast food is cigarettes. So the Lion Steel CK01 is a how do you do fellow kids of a slip joint and it's one that you may have seen on your social media feeds from young fellers over the past few years. It has a few modern features that soft modern betas have been wanting in their slip joints for a while. Like screws so you can take it apart for your precious teardown YouTube videos. And namely a modern blade steel that won't make you cringe called the M390. The M390, yeah it has a V in front of it, is a pretty nice stainless steel and last time I checked, still considered a super steel. I'll link a Cedric and Ada knife science steel knife lab test thingamajigger at the end. Peach from Cedric and Ada, of course, is another damn millennial. Sorry, that wasn't nice, but this tends to happen when I carry slip joints. Like I said earlier, there's about three varieties of blades, and I prefer this clip point over the round head and the Warncliffe style. Collector's knives, whatever, are the only retailers who carry the knife, and if I'm looking at the website right now, it's running low on models, and who knows when they're going to do another run. The blade is thin and slicey, and a thumb nick if you have especially strong nails, otherwise you just pull the blade out with your thumb and forefinger, or with your teeth. And while we're at it, let's have a talk about walk and talk. I'm going to be honest, I have several slip joints and I've never used this term. I've seen people talk about it and have resisted using it until now, but you and I know that I'm not a real knife bro anyway, so we're okay with it. But the walk is how it opens and closes, you know, the little pivot action. And the talk is the sound heard when it snaps shut. Since it's a very technical term, I'll say the walk and talk is, uh, good. I don't know. It has a hard snap when it closes, and it's a smooth and firm two-stage open. The back spring on it is a bit tighter than my case sodbuster, but not a whole lot. Collector's Knives rates the pull of the blade at about a 6 out of 10 in resistance, 10 being the highest, of course. Sounds about right to me. I make it a point to not let any of my knives snap shut, so I generally avoid the talk part of the walk and talk. The blade tip doesn't stick out of the handle when closed near the back, and it might be obvious, but people can be dumb. The knife doesn't lock. A slip joint doesn't lock. This is a two-handed open and close, unless, of course, you let the blade snap shut or talk. The handle sure is pretty. I think some people would prefer no visible screws from an aesthetic standpoint, which is fine. But they're there so you can take it apart, clean it, and then they roll off your table and you never find them. Most old slip joints aren't easy to take apart because men at the time didn't think much about them back then. They were tools and cheap. They didn't have social media and they bought new ones when their old knives broke. And they sure as hell weren't applying the goddamn Hudson filter to them on their smartphone. The handle comes in all sorts of materials, but I picked the Bone Micarta handle option mainly because it was one of the five remaining choices, but I actually think it's my favorite one, now that I think about it and look at the other ones. It's smooth with not a lot of grip, but a subtle visual texture, 
and it's polished to a satin luster. Now, I don't have to tell my Depression era viewers here that micarta is just a fabric imbued with resin because they've forgotten more about knives than 50 knife influencers combined, but I figure I say it for the new people. The handle as a whole is really comfortable and just barely fits my hands, but it's acceptable enough that it's been my main work knife for the past month. It isn't a tiny knife, but it isn't as big as a full-size sod buster like this GEC bull buster. As far as unfinished edges or the owie parts, the blade tang when closed can be a little less edgy in my opinion. How about the pocket clip? Every slip joint super fan asshole will tell you that pocket knives don't need clips. And while I really value their contribution to society, which I think is pretty much posting their opinion under YouTube videos I hate, I don't agree with them. I don't like to dig into my pockets for my knife, so I found the perfect slip joint companion made by hand by a dude in Germany. It's called the DP Steel and Leather Slip Clip. Comes in two sizes, and I'm sure he can custom make you something if you really wanted. This is the smaller of the two sizes. He said the most popular knife it's used with is the Benchmade Proper, which is, I guess, a similar size to the Lion Steel here. It's, of course, on my wish list, too. It's a deep carry and just a little more awkward than having the clip on the knife itself, and it protects your knife from keys, loose change, and butterscotches in the bottom of your pocket. Yeah, I'll bet those old guys wish they could disassemble their knives when they get gummed up with butterscotch fragments. The clip slip is made to order in many leather colors. Check out his Instagram feed link below. It's about $50 shipped for the small one and $60 shipped for the large one. I've bought them both, and I will do a review of those in the future. Comparisons. Forgive me, I really don't have too many side-by-sides right now until we move out of the in-laws house sometime in May or I guess December probably. Most of my knives are in storage. First, the Lion Steel. I really like this knife, but with the combination of the clip slip, it really works well as an everyday carry without many drawbacks. Call me a cretin, but I like my pocket clips almost as much as I like power steering or air conditioning and color television. The knife matches the slip clip pretty well, and boy does it look like hot shit on Instagram. Next, another slip joint, the Case Sodbuster. I'll have to use some old footage for this. It's a larger slip joint, about 30 bucks, but comes in a small, office-friendly size too. Fit and finish isn't as nice, and the carbon steel blade isn't going to give you the edge retention and stainlessnessness of the 390. Sorry, M390. I think Case offers stainless steel blades too, but why the hell would you want one of those? Now, there's nothing wrong with carbon steel, but a lot of people like stainless blades. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, just saying. Now, the Boker slack, because I've never manned up. This one is one of the toughest to pull slip joints I've ever used. It's a nice knife, but it's kind of a pain in the ass to pull and close. I went to poke in the palm of my hand on the clip point a lot, and that's an area that I use quite often, so I need to keep it nice and scab free. Plus the lotion, sorry, plus the lion steel is a nicer looking knife and has a better blade steel and isn't a boker. Oh, uh, okay. There's nothing wrong with bokers. Some of their liner locks may as well be slip joints, and that's cool with me. And then of course not seen as the bench made proper because I've blown all my money on other things. I still want one though, so, you know, I'll review in a few years. I hate clicks. Then there was the GEC Bull Buster, but I had to send that in for repair for something you'll see in an upcoming video. So I'm wrapping it up. The knife costs 125 bucks by itself, bringing it to about 175 with the slip clip. Now I know Buck makes a knife called the 110 that locks and comes with its own sheath, high-end brass in the handle, and the ability to know everything when you own it, all for about 40 bucks. But the Lion Steel is a great work carry for me, and the combo is slowly becoming one of my favorite carry items. The knife is a little on the small side for my tastes in the handle and blade department, but boy is it pretty. You want boiled potatoes and butterscotch with that walk and talk? If you watched my last video about my 10 favorite knives, this might be a future contender to add to that list. Lion Steel does make some nice looking knives, but they're a little too large in the pocket for me for their blade size ratio, and have gimmicky bullshit like the Roto Block. I mean, it's cool if you like gimmicks, you know, I guess like a a modern slip joint. Huh. This is by far my favorite Lion Steel design. Okay, I really haven't looked at the whole catalog in a while, but strong opinions make me sound like I know what I'm talking about, even if I'm wrong. Anyway, if you like the sort of millennial influencer bullshit, even though I'm technically a Gen Xer, 79, look it up, subscribe and comment, then maybe think about a small one or two hundred dollar donation to my Patreon on a recurring basis, or just a dollar a month, I guess, is fine too. Follow me on Instagram. Be sure to follow DP Steel and Leather, who makes wallets, belts, folios, and more in addition to clip slips or slip clips or whatever they're called. 
on Instagram. Shoot him a DM if you have questions about slip clips or want a specific color or any of his other products. Thanks for watching.